are so excited that you're back with us for another episode of Meet My Mississippi Authors and Artists on the Hill Country Network. And I'm telling you, I have the most fabulous friends. We have another one with us today. You know how I love to do. I love to let them introduce themselves. So this lady is going to introduce herself and tell you where she's from and what she does. So, Hello, I'm Dot Corson. I'm from Pontotoc. I'm an artist. I've been an artist since 2002. Uh, in a previous life, I was a registered nurse. I was a nurse administrator, and in 2002, I started working full-time in my art, something that I've done all my life. It's so wonderful. I have a studio, teach, uh, bring in other teachers, and an art school. Okay. So Love that. Funny. And I always start off with telling people how I met these fabulous people, and usually it's from Facebook. Right. We started off being Facebook friends yeah. like 2008 or something like that, and we would I, I would love to go around and share all the authors that I knew in Mississippi and all the artists. So you came across one time because oh my goodness, the cotton fields and the and the dirt roads and the stuff that you love to. I mean, you are just a master at the trees and the yeah. dirt roads and the just the everyday life it's like you're there you're like you could step out of the room and step into one of those paintings so that's how we got to know each other yeah it is that long and uh that and i was interested in your poetry because i like to write mm -hmm. too and i've written right? a few poems i've not ever shared with anybody and i think everybody does but, everybody loves to yeah, write poetry but the um but to me, what I paint is the poetry. It's the story of the South. It is. And it's the, I always say that it's the rural South that I'm it bringing is. to life. It and is. I don't use words, but my painting is my words. And uh, it's what I grew up with. It is. And it's the simplicity of the common people It in is. The South. And it brings it to the world. And we're oh, going to get you. to that. But we're going to start with where did you grow up? Where did you go to school? We, we like to sprinkle all that in there so we can get some connections. Oh, I went to high school with her. I went to college with her or whatever. So tell us all about that. Where did you grow up? Where did you go to school? All that. That is, that's a long story. Yeah. I won't tell it in real time. <laughs> right. Okay, right. <laughs> don't you, don't you okay. appreciate that? Yeah. But um, I grew up and was born around Corinth, Mississippi. Okay. Suth, okay. Um, family that had been in my family, you know, family farm for a couple of three generations okay. or more. And um, later on, everything kind of went haywire in our family. Mm -hmm. and. I was at age 10 and put in foster home. Mm -hmm. And so I was moved, I lived in a foster home in Alcorn County and then I was moved to Calhoun okay. County. Okay. And I lived there, I was behind in school because I hadn't been to school in my early life. I grew up like Pippi Longstockings. I don't know if you've ever read Yes, her. that She's was one hero. of my favorites. She's my I hero. love Pippi. I, but I, my life, okay. really, I really? could relate to her, yes. Okay. Because I kind of grew up on my own early early childhood and then was and you're going to help home. somebody with that story to let you know that that doesn't affect the whole rest of your life oh, that no. you know you know what no. i'm saying those oh, kind no. of things don't it's a triumphant it story. is it is and because i was so blessed to um have such my real parents were loving parents mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so i didn't have really bad situations right, there right but um thing it just got to the place where i couldn't stay right there. and so and then but I hadn't been to school uh -huh. very much. So uh -huh. when I was put in foster homes, I went through the eighth grade and got married. Oh right my God. Out of the eighth you grade. gotta be kidding me. Nope. How old were you? In the I eighth was sixteen. Really? Because I had been oh, skipping look behind. Grades. Okay, yeah, okay. I, I mean I was a good student. Right. But okay, I just yeah. Had, been, had been in school. Okay. And so at sixteen I was married. And uh -huh. the marriage ended later on. But I still studied on my own. Mm -hmm. I went to college libraries and read books and oh, looked wow. at art books. I wanted to be an artist. Okay. But I didn't. But I was emancipated from the state, and I really didn't have a foundation under me to support mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. af after a certain number of years to go off and be an artist. Mm -hmm. I just had to had to do whatever. And my landlady was a director of nursing. Okay. And so she had me to come to work with her as a nurse's aide okay. that opportunity okay. which I thought was amazing for somebody with an eighth grade education. Okay. I was so proud of that job I can't tell uh -huh. you. And started working there and pretty soon she and the administrator called me in and the owner of the hospital who was a doctor uh -huh, uh -huh. and offered me a full scholarship to go to RN school. Okay. And I had to tell those people that was the most 
oh, embarrassing thing in my life. Uh -huh. Tell them I only have an eighth grade education. Uh -huh. And they gave me a piece of advice that administrator did that day. He said, you can do it, Don. He said, if you work hard enough, you can do it. Okay. He said, you'll have to stand on your head. He said, but you know what? You can stand on your head for a little while. Okay, wow. He said, you can't stand on your head forever. Ever, but you can. Nobody can. He said, but you can do it for a little while. To you, to get through if that. you really want to do yes. this, stand on Isn't your head. Isn't that beautiful? That's, That's beautiful. advice for life, for yeah, anything. I tell my grandkids yeah, that. It is. And so I took off that day. I entered school. 123 started, 33 graduated, and 20. And you were one school, of them. And I was one okay. of them. Okay. <laughs> and so after that, I went on uh, and got my bachelor's, and then I got my a dual master's in oh nursing my good. and hospital administration. Isn't that beautiful? And so I had an opportunity to support myself and to buy all of my art supplies and paint uh -huh. the whole time. Uh -huh. But I couldn't just go off and be an artist. Uh -huh. There's no safety net. And it's right. hard to be right. an artist to get established. Yes, those I have to tell my years, son that all yeah, the time. It those really first few years are very lean. I've got a a friend that's got a good video um, that his nephew did. His name is Phil Sandusky. Okay. He's an artist in New Orleans. Okay. He's pretty famous uh -huh. nationally. And Phil, um, this video that just came out, Phil sent it to me this week. And in it, he's talking about if you're doing it for the money, you're doing it oh for the Oh my goodness. Send that to me so I can send it to my son that. so it can encourage him oh, with that because so he's all into art. Phil is Please. A genuine, sweet. And we'll try to put that link artist. up so that other people will find out. I'll give and, it to you. Yes, absolutely. Now let's start back again with the art and how you decided that I have a talent for art. Okay. When did you start loving art or like to draw or just were you doodling or what? That what goes made, back to childhood. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, my father was what they call deaf and dumb. Okay. He couldn't hear and he was tongue tied. Okay. That man could draw. Oh my gosh. He could draw anything. Uh -huh. And we were really poor as a child. Uh -huh. And people would come to our house and say, Mr. Albert, can you draw me a horse? Can uh -huh. you draw me a whatever? Uh -huh. And it was just a source of pride. Right. Because I'd have to be his interpreter. Okay. And when he could do something that people that I thought were big, high up, yeah, men, right, high up, that, that he came could do that, him, right, to get a, and were just so <laughs> amazed at his skill, and he would sit down, and we didn't have much, but we had paper sacks from the mm -hmm. grocery store, and we all have gifts, and sit down with a pencil at night. He and I were night owls, and we'd sit up together, and he, yeah, and we'd draw on paper sacks. Really? And he'd show me perspective. And You're kidding me. Those kind of things. Oh, no, that's how it chills. started. Oh, my goodness. That's, that's how it started. And I was always the kid that loved colors, and, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, now I smell a pack mm -hmm. of colors, and I feel in my heart like it's recess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's exciting. It's thrilling mm -hmm. to think about the possibilities of what you oh, my goodness. when you were a kid and yes. had those opportunities. But um, so, and then throughout school, uh -huh. through my school years, I was the kid that got to, like when I was in elementary school, I'd go to high school and do their door for, uh -huh. oh, okay. for Thanksgiving, okay. I'd do the turkey pictures and stuff. And so that was very uplifting to me when I had a pretty low self-esteem uh -huh. uh -huh. during those years. And I was the welfare kid you okay. know, that was a foster child and I didn't get to do a lot of activities other kids had. We didn't uh -huh. have right, money. Right, the money for that. And so, but I did have that, and that made me feel really good. Yes, and so yes. it does, what you have inside you is what gives you. And we all have something special that yes. we have to give to the world. And I tell everybody that give it whatever it is. Somebody's looking for whatever it is you have to offer. Yes. Now let's start back with some of the art. When we first got to know each other, you start getting your paintings in some of the big high offices and you know in government and everything. What was one of your first biggest commissions, or that you got one of your big paintings in somebody's office, and we're like, oh my goodness, that's wonderful. It's all happening so, serendipity. Yeah. Because God just puts things in mm -hmm. our lives. Yeah, absolutely. For things to just happen. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just, I mean, it feels like serendipity because. It's not planned. Right. But I had a, okay, the lady that was the marketing person for the Tupelo Airport called and said, we need some pictures there when Toyota came mm -hmm. in. Right. And so I thought, well, if I'm going to, because I think this way, mm -hmm. I thought, if I'm going to do a painting for the airport, I'm going to do a billboard. Okay. So I did a four foot by nine foot painting, okay. basically, to okay. go on the wall. Because I like painting large, yes. I still do to yeah. this day. Most of my stuff is really large paintings, 
And, uh, and so they put that there, and then later on I had a show in Jackson, mm -hmm. and I had that painting, and it was of the Natchez Trays. Okay, Parkway. right. And so it ended up in Governor Barber's right, office. Right, right. And later on, when he left office, I picked it up, and Gail Wicker called me, mm -hmm. and, it, and wanted it to be in Roger Wicker's office in Washington. Right. Now, all of this is just people <laughs> calling me. Right. And I'm like, well, I'm going to be in Richmond, Virginia painting because I'd been accepted into this um, thing. I was just thrilled to death to mm -hmm. go up there and paint with mm -hmm. a bunch of national and international artists. And so I just carried it with me. And so he sent his aide and put it in his office. And then after that, it was in his office when I listed it for sale. And the uh, Castle Group, which is a company out of Columbus, mm -hmm. who was doing a convention center for Mississippi State, okay. called me and said, we want that painting. And so I sold it to them. And then Roger Wicker had it. And so we had to get it out of Roger Wicker's office. Mm -hmm. And Roger didn't have the funds to somehow to send it back to me. And so I was putting pressure on him. Mm -hmm. I was saying, now, <laughs> y'all wanted this. Right. You got to get it back to me. And so Cause somebody else wants the it. next <laughs> few days, somebody called me and said, your painting flew home in the president of Mississippi State University's plane okay. last night, and they're going to put it out there for, for sale. So it's in, I mean, for right. it's sold, and so it's going to be, now it's in the, uh, uh, trying to think of the name of the convention center. It's this old cotton okay. building. It's called the Mill. Okay. In, in, okay, at yes. Mississippi State yes. University. Yes. It's in the foyer there. There's okay. a little plaque on it. I love it. Every so often you just post and post and stuff and then okay It's amazing. To it me. is to watch. And it's just like I have had this thing, I don't know what it's called, that you were going to Ireland, you got to paint. How did you open. did you win it? Did you put it in? Did you put in some of your paintings? How did you get to do that? Now, how did that come about, and what was it called? Social media is how, because... I tell people that artists, art, authors, ma Facebook, and social yeah. media is magic, okay? If you're not on there, you need to get on there it's yesterday. Free. And it's free. Yeah, okay. And so, I, you tell I like to talk anyway, mm -hmm. so I like to share things right. on social media. And so, it's been a real natural, organic right. thing for me to right. be out there. But, um, I... There is a lar Europe's largest plain air event where artists paint outside. Right, plain, plain air, air that's what it is. Plain yeah. air means um, out in the open air. Right, exactly. Painting. And Monet and the boys back when the old yes. impressionists yes. Uh, started yes. the plain air movement. And it's still going today. Yes. And um, I do some of that too. And so like that's what I was doing in Richmond. And oh, then, right. Um, they contacted me and um, a invited me to be one of the artists from the United States to be there. And so it's just an honor to go and, and be there for a week mm -hmm. and paint mm -hmm. with other artists from all over Europe. So um, did they tell y'all what to paint? The or they said, let's go outside and look no. around and you just start painting outside. They took us, they, they put us on buses. They mm -hmm. had it all mapped out. Mm -hmm. And they would just take us to these like castles and things. They had like, and to these um from Pontotoc, mississippi y'all to these <laughs> castles and that's where i taught and it was these lanes with these trees and just this beautiful in this, ireland in that ireland, is amazing beautiful only thing is the day i was painting they have these big old rocks like that on this long driveway it looked like something out of a movie mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i turned my foot and fell down on that oh my, you, my, yeah you put that on facebook yeah I don't know. yeah <laughs> I did, but anyway, it wasn't all pretty, but I did. I got to be there, and I painted uh, that, and then I taught at another couple of places. One of them was a coastal scene, mm -hmm. and they're, they're um, you know, I Ireland is an island, yes, yes. and um, and it was just, we were in the Wexford area, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so we were in the south, uh, west, southeast corner okay. of, of Ireland, but before that, uh, I had traveled all over the whole, the mm -hmm. whole uh, country. Mm -hmm. Just I'd been there a month. Oh I, my Because once I went over there, I just went. Hey, to let me paint. just hang out. Yes, yeah. this paint everything. And a friend of mine who is from Arizona was was teaching in Ireland, and she was also teaching, and I mean she was teaching in 
Italy was also teaching in Ireland, mm -hmm. and so she joined me in Dublin, and so she traveled oh, with my me, goodness. so we had fun doing that. Speaking of teaching, tell us about, you have an art studio. Mm -hmm. You have master artists come in to Pontotoc, Mississippi, I from do. all over everywhere, yeah. to Pontotoc, Mississippi, y'all. Tell us, when did you get the idea to do that? When did it start? How did it all come together? Years ago, when I first started, um, studying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I studied with a local artist named Billy Kirk. He okay. passed away, um, I can't remember how many years ago, probably about 12 years ago. Okay. And um, he was like a mentor to me. Mm -hmm. And somebody told me my work started looking like his, and so I wanted to change that up. And so a, an atelier system is really popular now in the United States. And that is just a private art school where you bring in master artists who teach in the traditional way of painting mm -hmm. and learning how to paint. And so these days, you can get artists who are working professionally because all artists, even the most professional and richest ones, mm -hmm. Love sharing yes. with other art yes. students, mm -hmm. especially professional artists. Yes. So most of the artists that come to my workshop are already professional artists. Okay. The people that are attending. The okay. Students. Okay. And the teachers are master teachers. Okay. And so they come in and and teach, and I started doing bringing people in because I was also associated with a lot of artists around here, mm -hmm. and there's not an art school in yes, North Mississippi. Right, right. And so I just wanted us to have an art school. Mm -hmm. And so at first I was renting building, mm -hmm. a building, mm -hmm. and uh, a few years ago, about three years ago, my husband said, let's just build us a building. That is wonderful. And so we did, and it's just. And tell us where it's located. It's in right Pumpkin. behind my house. It's, uh, it's uh, I live at, um, between Pontotoc and, and Tupelo, it's mm -hmm. on my website. Mm -hmm. You can see right. pictures of it, and we'll have a link yeah, to we'll the website. Yeah, we'll put that up. Mm -hmm. And um, it's 2,300 square feet. It's a studio gallery and, and workshop. Mm -hmm. And so I bring artists in there. This next one will be next week, and the artist is Dawn Whitelaw. Okay. And she is a portrait artist that studied with Everett Raymond Kinsler. Okay. And uh, she is also a um, the teacher of many famous, famous artists okay. now that are professional artists, okay. and um, she also mentors my daughter. Who is yes, and we got to talk about your yeah. daughter. Okay, so you did a, a with your daughter. I think you did like a. a a display or whatever uh, showing at ICC yes. and my son was at ICC yes. and he came to it and I love then him. he came to your art studio he was asking you well how do you do promotional and how do you market and you're like you need to ask your mother she's exactly a master I <laughs> but I was so glad you told him that I was like I told you Henry I mean you uh, know people they don't want to listen to that no they don't want to listen <laughs> they want to listen to somebody else so I was like just ask her but tell us about your daughter and how that got all started with her art and what's well, her she name? doesn't listen to me. She's not on any <laughs> social media. <laughs> right. She, um, my daughter is a physical therapist. When she was in high school, that's all she cared about. Right. She finished, graduated at Tupelo, and uh, she wanted to go to PT school. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I had, at that time, was recruiter at, and mm -hmm. was for North Mississippi Medical Center. Mm -hmm. And so I was recruiting uh, physical therapists and um, OTs and PTs, mm -hmm. and so I knew a lot about it. And so I told her, and she went straight into college, headed to that, came out one. I've never, I had never seen her paint mm -hmm. or draw. Okay. Then one day, after she's married, she sends me a photo and says, "What about this to, for them to auction off tonight at church? Um, I just thought a painting mm -hmm. would be a good thing that you mm -hmm. know if it's good enough." And I said, send it, me your picture when you're through with it. And she wrote me back and said, that's my, that's not a photo, that's my painting. Oh my goodness. She was that good. It, and she's not that photo realistic mm -hmm. right now, but okay. I'll have to send you some of her paintings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. too. And it's so, so funny on Facebook, cause you tell everybody, my daughter is not on Facebook. I'm trying to get her on here. So I have to share this for her. I cause she to. won't come. And I said that that's kids for you. They won't listen to the thing. But she, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I really respect her because she is a mother and she's an artist and she um, is very prayerful about everything that she does and she just feels like that's what 
she needs to mm -hmm, do right mm -hmm. now, and I really respect I do, her. I do. All right, and so she gets enough work. Mm -hmm. but she right. does a lot of portraits and um and she's one of the teachers that you're and she teaches that is oh, wonderful she's one of the best that is I wonderful have. now tell us about the IMAX and Meridian honored you with some kind of uh what okay. was that? It's not the IMAX, it's the MAX. It's the MAX. Well, I said IMAX. I'm thinking of Memphis. <laughs> okay, MAX. The, the Mississippi, Mississippi Arts, Arts and Experience. Entertainment Experience. Yes, exactly. There's a new museum that's down there that honors uh, Mississippi movie stars, musicians, right. and artists exactly. and writers. Right. And uh, it's got, you know, the Hall of Fame people yes. are the big ones, yes. like Oprah mm -hmm. and uh, John Grisham, yes. all the big ones. But they also have legends in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And they called me a while back and said, we want one of your paintings that our board has That's decided wonderful. you are a legend in Mississippi arts. And I said, this is Dot Corson. I don't know who you think you're <laughs> right. talking to. I'm not the one. Is, this is me. And he said, no, I don't know. I said, I don't know anyone there. He said, everybody here knows you. Yeah. And so it's just really surprising how word gets around. It's beautiful. And so that really meant a lot to me. And so there I am on this poster. When you go in, it's like uh, Larry Brown, the writer from Oxford. Okay. And Tammy Wynette. And, <laughs> and me. <you. laughs> that is beautiful. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. But um, they have a a painting there, the painting they wanted, okay. Pick, Pick and Minute. Minute, Minute, okay. And um, it sold to someone from Ohio, so I had to paint them another one. And I painted one called um, Gathering Greens or something oh, like Oh, wonderful. That. I love your and themes. They're just so down to well, earth and country. And, and, and they know. translate everywhere, all over the world. That's what I tell them about my poems. I have people from everywhere, and they love those little Mississippi they poems. Do. They, they do love them. your dirt roads. Thank they love those cotton fields. Well, the Delta it is a reoccurring thing yeah, in my ever, work. Yeah, it is, um, and I love it. My grandmother and grandfather were sharecroppers in the Delta mm -hmm. when I was in my real home. I saw mm -hmm. them a lot. Every, uh, every summer, we'd go spend the summer mm -hmm. with them. So, you know, they were in a shotgun house with no with a wood stove and no air conditioner right. and the cotton coming right up to the doorstep right. and the airplane probably dropping DDT on us when mm -hmm. I was out in the yard playing. But that was the kind of thing that I grew up with, that just mm -hmm. that flap with mm -hmm. that wind blowing all mm -hmm. the time. And, the heat and your the paintings delta. are almost just, like you can step out of your door and go right into that painting. Oh, That's the you. way you draw. It is oh. just so amazing in the I colors. I feel that. And the other thing I, you'll notice about my cotton, Patricia, mm -hmm is it's from a viewpoint of a child. It is. Because I, yeah. And that's why it feels that's like why. you can step, like you're it's walking on the road. Up. Okay, so that's the. It's my memory. That my is memory. the magic of those pictures. Oh. Cause I'm like, why does it feel like I could just step right into oh. it? Because it's low. You do it at the perspective of a child. Uh -huh. And okay. so the cotton would look really tall yeah. when you were a child. I love that. Um, but I didn't do a lot of cotton picking and hoeing and stuff. I mean, my little sack was, made out of a uh, uh, pillowcase. Okay, which, you know, okay. But you, you you had the scenes but around I had, you, though. Yeah, and I know the smells because I laid up in the car. And the Delta is magical. There's something. I'm going to yeah, be interviewing yeah. somebody else about that. It is a magical place. There's something what? about it. After I was put in foster home, I couldn't ever find where, I couldn't remember where they lived because mm -hmm. you know I never saw them again. Oh, really, really? I never saw them again. And I loved them so much. But, um, Anyway, as an adult, one time I was doing a show at Sumner, Mississippi, mm -hmm. and I was coming back, and we came to Marks, and I said, you know that railroad track that mm -hmm, runs next mm -hmm. to Marks is right on the wrong side of the road, but wherever my grandparents lived, there was a town, mm -hmm. and that railroad track ran to the west side of the town mm -hmm. and the highway. Mm -hmm. And so I started looking at Google Maps on my, on my iPad and mm -hmm. my car, mm -hmm. And I found Sledge, and I called my older brother, who was six years older than me, so he knew all this. And Charlie Pratt. <laughs> yeah, Charlie Pratt's on there. I, I looked at the map, and I traced the road, because I remember the road went across the railroad track, and then it ran parallel to mm -hmm. this track, mm -hmm. and then it curved. I just remembered everything about it. Called him. He said, they lived on Mr. Dean's place. I said, 
I found where it is. In that song. You know what this road's called? Dean Road. Mm -mm. And Fred Smith, the founder of FedEx, was born in Marks, Mississippi. He wasn't born in Memphis, Tennessee, y'all. Really? We know that FedEx is in Memphis, but he was born I in Marks, Mississippi. That. That's why you have to get my book and read my poems and all my stuff that I put in there about Mississippi, because people don't know half of our history. That's they true. don't know half of the things no. that are in Mississippi. But give us your website. How do you get to take classes at your studio? How do you come about all that? Just give them some information about get yeah, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory on my uh, website it's www.dotcourson.com so it's my name and then dot com um it's confusing because my name's dot and there's dots right, in right, the world wide right. web too but um when you go there, maybe they can put it up on the screen. They will. And when you go there, all my, there's a link called Workshops, Places to Stay, a little bit about Pontotoc County and the vistas that we have to paint there and uh, the Amish that are there. It's really interesting. That is wonderful. Good little farms in Pontotoc County and things. And I love other artists. So, What do you want people to get from your art, from, from your art, the message in your art? I'll tell you. I, I want everybody to find their story within my art. Love it. I, I'll tell you, it's it's a narrative from my heart to somebody else. It's a message. Yes. So, oh, you give me chills. Paint. Oh, thank you. It's in paint. The last painting I sold was called Milk and Bread. And it was a little oh, humble, no. humble painting. And a skillet with a piece of bread yes. cut out of it and the knife still in it holding the bread up. And a glass of milk, milk. and behind oh it was a scene from one of the Barbizon painters in the 1800s, uh -huh. where it's the couple praying over, over the bread, the, the, now the, over their um, field. There's a husband and wife standing oh, out okay. the field, okay. and there's some potatoes on it, and they're just thankful for uh -huh, it. Uh -huh. And it, a lady that bought it said she wanted it because her mother. The last time she visited her home place, mm -hmm. it had been sold and there was nobody in it, just an old mm -hmm, empty mm -hmm, house. Mm -hmm. And she said, I wish I could get some milk and bread and eat it here. And she went to the local store and she said it was a miracle. They had cornbread, cornbread. and they had some milk and a little plate, a little bowl, okay. paper bowl. Okay. So they went back to her, her mother's old home place and that's the last meal she had. Oh my goodness. Home. And she bought that painting. Oh, that's beautiful. Things like that just turn up. I mean, when I do a painting and, then and I'm going to steal that about from my heart to yours and find your story in it. I oh, just love that well, because that's what I want to do with my poems and yeah. that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, that is beautiful. That would be good for yours. And you don't put on that. Facebook whether it's sweet milk or buttermilk because you'll have fights all night long. That's I true. did that one time and I was like, y'all stop it. Ain't that serious, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever one you want to put in there is fine. See y'all, we have the most fabulous guests. It's just like you're coming into their Aww. living room. Thank you so much for coming to be with us. Thank you so much. Thank for you for me. tuning in for another episode of Meet My Mississippi Authors and Artists on the Hill Country Network and do not miss one episode. See you.